Welcome back. Dan Roy Morgan, the patriarch of Morgan Heritage fame, is rebooting his musical career with the release of this Peter Tosh Bob Marley original. This after the I'll Do Anything For You singer, dedicated almost 20 years in fostering the musical careers of his children. Born in Clarendon, Jamaica in 1946, Denmark Morgan had a desire for a career in music at an early age. But it wasn't until he had grown up that his dream became reality. By then, Morgan had migrated to the U.S. and in the mid-1970s started a New York-based reggae band known as the Black Eagles before launching a prosperous solo career. At the turn of the 1980s, Denron Morgan found favor in the U.S. mainstream with this monster. I'll Do Anything For You led to a deal with RCA Records and his debut album, Make My Day. Denron Morgan went on to plant an incredible musical legacy, racking up credits in every facet of the business, including fostering and managing two successful musical groups comprising his children, the Grammy Award-winning Morgan Heritage and LMS. Apart from music, Denroy Morgan, a father of 30, is at times a bishop, a barber, a cook, and an advocate for the legalization of marijuana. In 2011, Denroy beat incredible odds in New York City by getting off a charge of possession of over 20 pounds of marijuana with only a court fee charge of US $25 and 90 days probation. In his defense, Morgan argued that the weed is a sacramental requirement for his Rastafarian faith. And shortly after the case was closed, legislation changed in New York City that prevents persons from being arrested for possession of under 23 grams of the weed. Den Roy, who wants to be called Ras Morgan, is also an appointed and anointed ambassador of the Ethiopian Orthodox Coptic Church and was recently honored by the hip-hop community for outstanding community work in Harlem, New York. Ras Morgan, our very special guest right now, right here on stage. Ras, so good to have you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so you're... Your visit to Jamaica at this time, do you call it a visit or you're coming home? No. You call it coming home? I'm coming right? home, yes. Is, is as a result of the Peter Tosh? Yes. Um, celebrations? And the promotion of the record. Of, yes. the, of the record that yes. you've, you've done? Yes. That's the Get Up Stand Up record? Yes, sir. Okay. But speak a little bit about the, the Peter Tosh celebrations Well, it is week. the Peter Tosh celebration that really caused me to be here. Yes. Because, yes, I wanted to promote the record. But the Peter Tosh cel uh, celebration and the mm -hmm. tribute concert right. give me an opportunity to do more than just come in and just talk with you or go into a radio station and do an interview. Okay. Give me an opportunity to actually perform mm -hmm. and perform with other artists, even from other genre at the time when I performed was also on stage too. So it was a good opportunity. I give thanks for that. So what do you make of the, the opening of the museum? I think it is well deserved. It's been a long time coming. Yes. Peter's contribution to the Rastafari community and to the world and to the people of the diaspora, I think should have recognized this a while ago, but it's never too late for sure, I read. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about your appointment, your ambassadorial appointment. What are your duties? Well, I've been called since 1975, mm -hmm. where His Imperial Majesty revealed himself to I as the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. And when I read my Bible under the guidance of the prophet God from the 12th tribe of Israel, from Genesis to Revelation, I recognize that his majesty, his Christ in his kingly character, make him God manifest in the flesh. I was appointed and anointed by the Ethiopian Orthodox Coptic Church of North and South America mm -hmm. as an ambassador of the church to the Rastafari community internationally. Okay. And last year I was also appointed and ordained as the bishop of the International Gospel Helpers Church. Mm -hmm. Rastafari. So it's a, a worldwide portfolio. Absolutely. Rasta mission is universal. Yes. It's not just I. It's the culture of Rastafari. 
the teaching of Christ must identify with King Rastafari. And the World Council of Churches who have acknowledged his majesty as a defender of the faith has not see to it that their leaders and their students from these theologian graduation situation, mm -hmm. the truth that must come about the Redeemer, Yeshua, mm -hmm. and the Restorer, Emperor Haile Selassie, is one mission for a family. The family is called Israel. Okay. From Genesis to Revelation. Jaja. -ja. All right, talk a little bit now about your award. Okay. By the hip hop community. Yes. For outstanding community work yes. in Harlem, New yes. York. Headed by a uh, rapping Tate. Yes. The general, who is a brother who been standing up for the righteousness of hip hop. He recognized my work. Mm -hmm. And in he organizing to acknowledge the work of many black men in Harlem as far as community service is concerned, which are service that you don't get financial yes. reward for. Mm. So you see me in that category. Okay. And so what are some of the things you've done in the community? Strictly for unity. Mm. I have unified sabbatical service and Sunday worship within the Ethiopian Orthodox Coptic Church of North and South America, okay. where there was a Sunday church. Mm -hmm. And after discussing the Bible and the commandment. The Abuna, Abuna, Nathaniel Joshua Shiloh Salim, his soul rest in peace, recognized that I brought a message to the church, mm -hmm. and the message was unity. So he said that the church was intending for many years to have Sabbath service, as it is in Ethiopia, where Sabbath service, his majesty was a Sabbath keeper. Okay. And there's also Holy Sunday that is acknowledged by the church. So based on my calling, my anointing, it's about unity, because I do understand that the church is one foundation. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the good things that I've done churchically. I'm also a part of the International Gospel Helpers Church, which recognized my work and ordained me as a bishop, which is also in Harlem. Mm -hmm. I've also been working on the unity between the Queen Mothers of Harlem. A lot of people heard about Queen Mother Moore. A lot of people don't know that Queen Mother Blakely has inherited the legacy of Queen Mother Moore. Mm -hmm. It's a woman who stand among the black leaders of America who advocate for reparation. We as Rastafarian, we talk a lot about repatriation. But what about reparation? Mm -hmm. That is something that we should also receive for over 400 years. We have been misused and abused. And you're going to repatriate us back empty-handed? Mm -hmm. No way. We didn't leave Egypt like that. And uh, repatriation is a government-to-government -government discussion that must take place for that to happen. Yeah. We're not going to just talk and get nice and feel say it's going to happen. So we need to come together that we can have one voice. That when we speak to the world, we speak as the Rastafari community. So you, you're speaking of all black Black people in the Western Hemisphere, let or me, let, just... How, how let me you? hip you to something. Mm -hmm. His Imperial Majesty, Emperor of Ethiopia, that reigned as a Christian king for 40 years, has given us a land grant, which is called the Ethiopian World Federation, with a constitution. Mm -hmm. And we have not been able, because of the falling nature, the sinful ways, and the disobedient ways that we have as human beings, the mistreatment that we have gotten as black folks on this planet, the time has come for it to come to an end. And that is why His Majesty in his messianic mission give us 500 acres of land in Ethiopia, Shashamani specifically, mm -hmm. for us to develop and create a model city. Now that's a great blessing, a great gift given to us as black folks. He said to the black people of the world. You know, now they're talking about black life matters. Mm -hmm. Our life matters. But the way we have been treated is as if our life don't matter. And that's why that statement had to come about and become an organization and a movement. Yes. So we as African, diaspora league, mm -hmm. we have a right to the kingdom of God on earth. And the kingdom of God is built around the Davidic covenant. 
So when I come amongst these theologians and these leaders of great congregation and these PhD in, the, in theology of Jesus Christ, I bring the theology of his majesty to them to let them understand that his majesty is the 225th king to sit upon the Solomonic dynasty, which is based upon the Davidic covenant. And there's no kingdom of God going to be established on this earth unless it has to do with the Davidic covenant. <laughs> ja, Rastafari. OK, so the, the, <laughs> the reparation is owed to all Africans in the diaspora. Absolutely. All right, talk, talk now about this, this great odd that you beat in New York. <laughs> 20 odd pounds of ganja. No odd, no odd, 21. <laughs> 21 know, 20 pounds. Odd, 20 pounds, 20 pounds, oh, really? <laughs> I don't want to carry that. OK, so how did you do that? God has been good to me. Mm -hmm. Trust me. He spread his shield around about me. And that's how I was able to escape. There was people praying for me around the world. And some prayer warrior, even out of Africa, even out of the Caribbean, some woman will win them pray and ball to God, it sound like a trumpet. For you. And for me, Rastafari, I, God, they let me know that they were praying and they rejoiced that their prayers was answered. Cha -cha, mm. that they prayed for me. So all of that combined, I give one power, the glory, the almighty creator of the universe. So didn't you mount a, a legal challenge to the case and with, with a team of, of <laughs> high-powered lawyers? It, 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 was, it was exciting for me. Yes. Because I've never had that experience before. And I was given such a confidence by the Almighty that I did not realize the magnitude of the punishment that I could have received mm -hmm. until everything was over. Ja, Rastafari. Mm -hmm. That I could have gone to jail for 10, 15 years and could have been fined $200,000. That could have happened to me. I was charged for conspiracy and intent to distribute. So your defense, your defense was that you, you use it as a Rastafarian. For sacramental use? Yes. And so, so that's your defense. That's the defense. And they, and they accept and, and bought it, that defense. I, I wouldn't say they bought it, because I didn't get no pay for it. <laughs> mm. So I wouldn't say they bought it. The spirit of the living God right. let them see that a man like me should have more than 20 pounds of herb. Do you think that you, you would have gotten that, that verdict if what, 20 years ago, 10 years ago? If that had happened 20 years ago, 12 years ago, to me, I believe that God would have done the same thing and set me free. So you beat the odds, won the case, paid $25 US, 90-day probation. Under the state administration, because remember now that I was first arrested by the state. And when I went back to court, the federal said, no, we want we to deal with this one. OK. And then I had to go to federal court. Mm -hmm. And then I was in two courts, state and federal. That cannot work. Yeah. So the state had to let go and make the big guys. Let the federal deal with deal it. Deal with that. OK. And them do the slamming up, you know. mm -hmm. It does sound pretty like school bail, you know. The feds. <laughs> the feds do work. <laughs> All right, and then the law, shortly after the case, the law changed. Because the herb was created freely to be used freely by mankind, freely. Man, in our corrupted and evil ways, have put a law against the ganja. The ganja has been persecuted like Christ has been persecuted. The herb has been persecuted. Herb is not a drug, so they lie on it. Now they are saying that they now discover that the herb is good for medicinal purpose. How long have the rest of man been suffering yes. by defending the right of the herb, to grow the herb, and to market the herb? Because there is a business. It's an industry now. And I heard from some great businessmen that they believe that the herb industry will become bigger than cigarette and alcohol together. My point is that the herb has been persecuted and mistreated like us. Cha-cha. 
No, they're giving it a chance, and America is confused about that. Because the state say it legal to open up this country, and you have certain amount of money that you have to put up as collateral. That means the poor rest man can't sell it again. Yeah. And the big man will never have nothing to do with it now, can't open up and sell it. And then the feds come in and say, it's illegal. That's confusion. I just encourage our Jamaican authorities that this little thing that they're going through about regulation and who's going to control distribution, let's get it straight, quick. Who was the vanguard advocating for the use of herb all these years by paying the price, blood, sweat, and tears, getting beaten, thrown in jail? Peter Tosh was one of them. Jaja, one of the bold ones. That's why I embraced the tribute to him, Jaja, because he paid a heavy price, physically, morally. Isn't it one of the reasons why you were, you were honored by the hip-hop community. Isn't it because the law, your case changed the law in New York where now nobody would be arrested and charged for under 23 grams of, of the weed. Isn't so, that part of why they, you're honored? I know. I, I think it's a time mm -hmm. that we are going through in the earth where there is a changes that must take place. You're talking about the transformation of our mind, the renewal of our spirit. This is what's happening in the earth today. So that little situation is minor to some of the changes that is taking place in the earth. When you see Rasta man can be recognized by the work of Bob Marley as a recording artist around the world to the extent, the influence it has on other human beings, it must be recognized that the Rasta fit the Rasta culture has made a tremendous stride in the midst of us, and it should not go unnoticed. Yes, we talk great things about Marcus Garvey now, but we the Garveyites are the children of the Garveyites. What are we doing about some of the things that Marcus left with us to give us leverage, to participate and compete? I have to use this opportunity to talk about how Jamaica have an opportunity on the world stage yes. to treat Herb and Rasta differently. Don't follow America. Take your own stand on the world stage where ganja and marijuana is concerned. Because let me tell you something. I travel the world and you know, mm -hmm. reggae music is now being taken away, uh, adapted by a lot of different countries. They have their own reggae artists. And they are paying their artists more for a concert that the real reggae artist is on, paying them more than the reggae artist. I'd be a witness of that. Ska. In America, there are so many ska bands. I did a WAP, Vance WAP tour three years in Morgan Heritage. And when I hear the ska band them, and I hear from way over some, when I go, it's pure white man and them dark glass and look well hip and I go out with them enough things. How many young ska bands do we have in Jamaica? Where ska music come from? Jamaica. I don't want them to put us in our box and talk about sacramental. Mm -hmm. Like we are some idiot who just got to smoke it. And what about the money we are making on it? We want to be a part of that too, where the herb oil is going, where the, the imp material is going, where this, the, the, the cosmetic that is being made out of herb. Who is selling that? Yes. So we know I'm part of that too. Yes, we do. And somebody got to speak. But you know what we need? Unity. All right. <laughs> Unity, that's a, that's a good point to take a break, Ras Morgan. We'll <laughs> take a break right here. When we come back, we'll talk about the rebooting of the musical career of Ras Morgan. Right here on stage. We'll be right back. When you stand by my side, are you relaxed? Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. And we're back with Russ Morgan, our very special guest, right here on stage. And quite a, quite a guest, wouldn't you agree? Okay, sir, so we want to talk about your rebooting of your career. You, you, you took a, 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 an almost 20-year hiatus on the career yes. to, to help to, 
to nurture, to build the career of your, 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 your offspring. Yes, sir. And now you're, you're taking back up the musical mantle, so to speak. Yes. Um, so where are you? And apart from this song, this Bob Marley, Peter Tosh original. Yes. Is there anything else that is Oh, there's an album. There's an, an album, album coming. Yes. That is already mastered, will be distributed by VP. Mm -hmm. VPAL is on our own independent label, ASAF Records. The album is called Musical Unity. Yes. And uh, there is different flavors that are on it. It's not just all roots and culture. Mm -hmm. I have never done spoken words before. And uh, I have done four spoken word songs mm -hmm. on this album. So the album is scheduled to release in April. There will be a second single to be released in February. Okay. So from now until April, everything I do is to promote the upcoming album. I give thanks that my biggest record was not a reggae record. And I hope this one that I do, that Bob and Peter write, I hope that it will be bigger than I'll do anything for you. Mm. Ja, why? Because at this time, we all need to get up and stand up into obedience to the almighty creator. All of us, you too. Of course. Yeah. All of us need to change and become more godlike. So we have been blessed to have a unit like the Dreads, a unit like LMS, a unit like Morgan Heritage, and all of that come out under the inspiration from the Black Eagles to Denra Morgan to the children. And I've also done spoken engagement. While I was building my children's career as a producer, as a manager, as a road manager, as a record executive, and as a father, and as a minister in their life. <laughs> We have done so many things. You're, you're, you're barbering is the one that's that just start. <laughs> barbering. How did you? When were you a, a barber? That, I was. A, that must have been before Rastafari, of course. Yeah, of course. But barber is always a barber. Because even when I had my dreadlocks, I was still Peter's best barber. Before Peter J. Peter yeah? Tosh. No, Peter Margan. Peter Margan. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of children, are you through having kids now? <laughs> 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 I don't know how to answer that, because yeah. personally, I still have in sex. Mm -hmm. Well, not as many young women and make no start to stick with me one wife now. Yes. One now. Even one, because that's why I never wanted to be a bishop, you know, all the years. Even Dermot Fagan tell me to be a bishop, you know, before I was ordained. But there's a part in the Bible where Paul writes, where he say, a bishop should be a man with one wife. And I had a problem with that. What about the women who are bishops? Women, bishop, what they gonna have? One what? One wife too? <laughs> okay. So something need to change. So for yeah. a while, I did not, you know, feel good about that. But to be honest with you, based on how life has transpired for me, mm -hmm. it's time for me to settle and give that one woman from Spanish Town that I have since uh, us was 16 years old, her and I. I born me and she born Argos. And she stand by me through all these arms out, I would call it, that I might have carried on. But out of it, I was blessed, Cha, because much abortion didn't take place for me. Cha, cha. All of them want to have the baby. And when you hear some me have 30 children, I don't mean I have 30 baby mother, you know. My wife, for me, I tell you about when we become one husband now for her. And, she uh, had how many? She have 15 from her belly, mm. and no C-section. Okay. And she stand by me, she mother all my other children at some point. And even the younger woman that gave me the last six, she mother her too, not only her children, but her too. And she had two children prior to meeting me. My, my wife, I have seen, known as Tati, big up Tati, Ja Rastafari. She is the one wife now, mm -hmm. and she's in Atlanta. So I'm mean, not really expect to make no more baby now. Mm -hmm. What I do now is try to nurture the almighty babies. <laughs> so I don't build the inner circle already. We don't need no more. Because okay. I, 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 over 90 had grand picnic me have now, you know. 
We have a 90 other day. 90 other day? Grand Pickney. Wow. That's the fire. And it seemed like the pace slowed down because the Grand Pickney, them not, the great grand, them not coming so fast like the grand came. Because mm. I think the great grand, them want to spend more time in education mm. and the, the development and the preparation. My children never think about that. Because they boil Irish marsh and the roots and I said, drink up and breathe up. So, can you promote? Um, the making of the babies. Making of babies. Of course. You don't promote that. You promoted that among your kids. You tell them to have more. Drink up and have more. Me say, drink up and breathe up. Drink up and, and breathe, breathe up. up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in a recent time, that's what happened. Almost every month, when I'm a son, I say, Daddy, Daddy, you're pregnant. Congratulations. Daddy, Ray, pregnant. Congratulations. Daddy, so. Pre so at the time, because I never believe in a bird control, I still don't believe in a bird control. You understand? Because life was given freely. And probably if I did think that way, I probably would have been more educated. I probably have a little more money. Uh, something different. Mm -hmm. But the price I pay for making children, I am proud of it. And why would I discourage anyone from making children? When it say, blessed is the man that have him quiver full. Because when the enemy call, they did shall stand, answer. You did stand by all of them. Of course. And, and did still do. And because it, it's still one big family, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. No matter, because I believe that we are one by the heart and the spirit. And we can become one through the mind by Christ. Yeah? My children have been obedient to me in all their childhood days, and still obedient to me. And if you hear them address me now, it's still, yes, daddy, although they're my granny, some and grandpa, some of them, they still say, yes, daddy, pass that on to their children. That discipline, that respect for elders, that respect for each other, and that respect for love and unity has been instilled in them because of their obediency to the divine guidance that their mothers and I have guided them with over the years. Rastafari. Ras Morgan. <laughs> the last in the wow. <laughs> what a chat, sir. I, I so appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming and sharing with You're us. You're welcome, and thank you for having me. All right, there you have him right here on stage. Ras Morgan, our very special guest in this segment. Winford Williams, on behalf of all of us, thanking you for joining us. Do join us again next week for more on stage. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Thanks for watching our video. If you are not yet a subscriber, click now and be on stage always.